Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Odin's Movie Blog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope oh, doing well today. I am joined by the Poopas. They are behind me enjoying some rawhide bone, so that way I can stay focused on this because, oh, Uprox, one of the greatest news organizations that has ever existed, almost as good as Vox and CNN in just journalistic integrity. But let's see what they have to say here. First off, Stephen Douglas says, Disney's $4 billion Star Wars acquisition turned a profit in less than six years. Um, you might be true, but it's not based off the things that you are giving us in this article at the very least, because I already know where they're going with this, because it is the same argument that's been given by so many pro Star Wars, or more, more accurately, pro Disney, uh, SJW NPC nonsense people who try and say, oh, but all the movies, they've made all this kind of money. And it all comes from people not understanding how the business works, not understanding how box office receipts work, and it is truly <laughs> frustrating. And in fact, I can already see the number, because again, I've seen this number being used several times already in these false arguments used on Twitter and other social media accounts to know that this is exactly where this article is going to go, and I shouldn't really have to go past the first paragraph. But it says, a long time ago, in a boardroom far, far away, well, that's clever of you, Uprox, Disney acquired Lucasfilm for $4.05 in cash and stock. The exact date was October 30th, 2012, a day that will live in infamy now with the way that Disney is running things. And in the six years since then, Disney has already turned a profit on its investment, according to CNBC. Hmm, really? With $4.8 in box office receipts and a ton of other revenue streams, it turns out that owning Star Wars is one of the best things you can do with your money and there is the number 4.8 billion in box office receipts not accurate that 4.8 billion is the way they get to that number is they, they take the entire box office gross for every single star wars film that has ever come out and just add it all together and says oh look 4.8 billion dollars see 4.8 billion that's higher than 4.05 billion right the problem with that is Keep this in mind, just as always, you do not get 100% of the box office receipts. Those are usually split with the theater chains because they have to obviously be able to afford to have those uh, to have those in theater and to be able to charge the tickets as they are because remember that they don't really make money off of tickets. They make money off of concessions. That's the reason why concessions cost so much is because they get almost next to nothing on the ticket sales because they essentially rent out the movie space for next to nothing when it comes to opening weekend because it's worth that. Uh, it's worth that. You know, when you're able to do that can you be able to get you're able to have the film for first you know firstly but then you're also able to have the film in several different screens and when you're able to do that guess what that brings more people in theoretically and therefore also brings in more people to buy more concessions and that is where the you know that is where the theater chains make their money. Again, I used to work for a theater chain, so I know a little bit about this, and that's the reason why it costs so much for your popcorn these days. Because even though it costs them next to nothing to do that, it's an offset, or rather it's a trade-off, because that's the reason why ticket prices aren't nearly as high as they probably could be. Because keep this in mind, if they kept... If they kept the concession stand near cost or close to cost, that means you'd be probably paying a heck of a lot more when you actually enter into the building because that's just how the business works unfortunately but with that being said the rule of thumb in the industry is that around 60% is what the what the studio ends up walking away with so when you see a billion dollars for example let's say a film grosses a billion dollars uh Rogue One is a great example of that Disney only got 60% of that so it got 600 million dollars now that's not the whole story because yes, it received six hundred million dollars, but guess what? It cost probably around three hundred million for that film to be made when you take in production costs and marketing costs, which means that it only had a net profit of around three hundred million dollars. Now that's the number that you have to start off with. Again, if we're talking about profit, if we're talking about receipts, that is where the focus needs to be. So three hundred million for Star Wars Rogue One. Okay, then we have to add that for every single film. We have to do that same process for every single film. And you get to a number that is not anywhere close to $4.8 billion. I would say that they probably reached about the halfway point at max three quarters just from box office revenue alone. Now, they are correct that there are other... Um, there are other cash streams, revenue streams that they have used. For example, Netflix has paid for the rights to certain Star Wars films. I'm sure that other, you know, other television services have paid for it as well. So that way they could show it. You know, anytime that you see a movie playing um, on HBO or a movie playing on any other TV station, that they had to pay for the rights to play that. So therefore, they're making money there. You know, obviously we talk about toys and how toy sales have been terrible. The problem, though, is that they have already bought. So basically the way that it works is that Disney sells the rights to the toys. And so therefore, when uh, when groups buy the toys, like, for example, Hasbro buys the rights, well, then Disney gets the payday. Disney gets the paycheck. And so therefore, they're already paid. Even the tail, even if the sales don't do well, 
they've already received the paycheck for the rights themselves. Now, they're not going to make a whole lot of money and profit off of the actual toys themselves because they're not selling, but still, those are all, you know, th those are all definitely revenue streams. The problem is, is that this whole argument is based solely on or primarily on this $4.8 billion in box office receipts. And if you take that away, if you cut that in half and you have to make up another $2 billion or so, it changes the conversation. It changes the mindset of, oh, they're doing really well. They're making bank off of Star Wars. Well, are they making money? Sure, but they're not nearly making as much as they should or could be making if they were actually running things the way that it should. So, let's see what it says here going forward. The profits are only going to grow with Star Wars Episode Nine. That is what you think. Because remember, 60% of the total box office gross, then they have to account for how much it costs to actually make the film, and then that's when you see how much the movie actually made. If this movie only makes $650 million, which is the low end of my projections, again, I think it could get as high as $850 million. I don't think it's going to reach a billion dollars, but let's say it does reach that $650 million. It only gets 60% of that, and then also you have to subtract the amount that they already put in to pay for the movie, which with this film, I would imagine that's probably going to be around $150 million production budget at the very least, and then you'd say half of that. So you're looking close to about $250 million uh, total total budget, and therefore it has to make all of that up. Now, of course, that's also on the low end too, because it very well could cost $200 to $300 million plus marketing and all those other things. It could cost closer to $400, $500, $600 million to make the entire movie. Again, most, more likely between $400 and $500 million since you look back to Solo. Solo costs around $500 million because they had to reshoot and they had to spend more money on it. So it makes a lot more sense that that movie costs as much as it did. I imagine that they're going to put so much money into Episode Nine to try and get as much profit as they can. But what they don't understand and what the people in the media people at Uproxx and Vox and all these other places don't understand is that the fans are not happy. The fans are not happy because the product has gone into the toilet. And this is not just, a, oh, you're saying this to get clicks, you're saying this to get views. It's like, no, this, this is just a fact and reality. The fact that I didn't go and pay to go see Solo, I bought a ticket to Deadpool 2 and then went to go see Solo instead. The fact that you have so many people who never even saw it, never even saw a Star Wars film, says a lot. The fact that it was the first movie to lose money is a huge deal. Now, some people say, oh, it only lost $80 million. No, it lost $200 million because, once again, they are ignoring facts. 60% plus you have to subtract the, um, the cost of the film itself. And they don't want to put those numbers in because they know if they do, oh, wait, it doesn't look very good. Oh, wait, it is closer to $200 million instead. Now, they're going to say, oh, Disney makes a crap ton on DVD and Blu-ray sales. And again, they've made a decent amount on them, but nowhere close to $2 billion worth, I can tell you that much. And it's going to be very interesting to see what actually happens. Again, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how this all plays out, how Episode Nine plays out, but also how much money. I would love for an honest person. So if you have the time, because I'm sure I could if I wanted to, but I just don't have the time these days. So maybe that might be a long-term project. I would love for someone to be able to give me a raw estimate, a raw total about how much money Star Wars has actually made to this point for Disney. So taking the real box office receipts, taking the real cost of selling the rights to the toys, taking the real Blu-ray DVD sales, putting them all together, putting any ad revenue stream or any stream whatsoever that you could possibly think of, putting it all together and then giving me a number. Because I would be very interested to see just how close it gets to that $4.05 billion that it costs to buy the rights in the first place. But anyway, guys, what are your thoughts about this? Again, I just, I hate it. I absolutely hate it when articles are so disingenuous like this, when they put out numbers like $4.8 billion, even though anyone with a brain and access to boxofficemojo.com can see, oh, wait a minute, it costs this much. Wait a minute, the production budget. Oh, wait a minute, 60% of all the entire film's gross. Oh, wait a minute, it's not nearly that rosy of a picture. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. But anyway, guys, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe. You are all amazing people. My puppies love you as they enjoy their raw hot bone. They are fantastic. Have a great day. And as always, God bless.